Welcome to O's Corner with your host, Onyi. Hello, hello, beautiful people. Welcome to episode one of O's Corner. I am Onyi, and I'm so grateful to be the creator, curator, and host for this space, this platform. I see it as a container for me to be more of who I am, witnessed by whomever chooses to do so. But I also see it as a separate container from me with its own destiny and work that it came here to do. And really it chose me to assist it in grounding that work, grounding whatever messages that it came here to give all of us, including myself. And honestly, it's been a long time coming. And uh, whether or not we consider it perfectionism or precision that caused me to wait this long, you know, I often vacillate between the two. It's here now and the timing couldn't have been more perfect. So I'm so grateful to be here with all of you in this space. This is the first of four episodes that are laying the foundation, the framework or the cornerstone, if you will, for O's Corner. And with every episode, I actually would like to begin with a prayer or a word of acknowledgement, acknowledging the beings that coexist with us that support us, that are reflections for us. And for me, it's such a beautiful way to initiate anything because it speaks to the idea of gratitude and the recognition that we are not alone. (sighs) Thank you, thank you, thank you to the ancestors. I acknowledge you, I welcome you in. You are here, you are always here. I've always been here, will always be here. Thank you for the sacrifices you made, the choices you made, everything you've done for us. You paved the way for us. Thank you for everything that allows us to see the reflections that we need to see in order to make the choices that help us to be more of who we are. May we pave the way for our future generations so that they may have the courage, the freedom, the peace of mind, the joy, to be who they are, whatever that looks like. So we thank you. I thank you and I acknowledge the directions. I thank you and I acknowledge the elements and elementals. I thank you and I acknowledge the beings in the plant, mineral, animal kingdoms. I thank you and I acknowledge earth. I thank you and I acknowledge everything on earth, everything outside of earth. I'm appreciative of this co-creation, this co-reflection, this coexistence. I'm grateful for this life, for the opportunity to be here, to be a reflection of the all that is, to be a part of the puzzle that completes the puzzle. I sit in gratitude always. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ashe. (sighs) Doesn't it just feel good to sit in that place? I mean, I personally think so. So again, we're going to start every episode in a similar fashion. So every Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific time will be the airing of a new episode. And each Friday will have its own focus. That's a specific topic or category of topics that are related in some way, shape or form. And it's actually funny because I went through the calendar and I counted all the Fridays in 2021. So I was looking at all the months that had four Fridays or five Fridays. And that's something I actually never done before. So I'm not even sure if this is consistent across years. I don't imagine so, but you know what? I don't know because I've never tried it and I don't know that I'm going to spend the time to go back (laughs) and check it out, but you know what? It's all good. So there are seven months with four Fridays and five months with five Fridays. And I say that because the breakdown of each week's topics is as follows. The first week, which will be this episode today. So the first week will be on topics dealing with metaphysics, spirituality, religion, philosophy, and I mean, any other name that we conventionally give to topics or subjects that are related to wisdom, understanding, and so forth. The second week of the month will deal with love, sex, dating, and all things relating. And I'll explain more in that episode as to how that came about. But the acronym that I give that one is LSD. So that's LSD with Oni, which again, we'll talk about (laughs) the reference there, which I think many of you may find funny. Uh, The third week of the month will be a community spotlight to showcase people that I'm just really 
wanting to honor and acknowledge for the work that they're doing on some level to support the community. However small or large the community is, doesn't really matter to me. I'm not looking at size specifically, but if there's some sort of energy around community work that these individuals are doing through whatever work they're doing, then I really want to provide a space to just share what they're doing and have them speak on what they're doing from their own mouths so that we can have a better understanding and we can find ways to support them in whatever ways we can. So that is the third week. And the fourth week will be a moment of peace, stillness, grounding and healing, whether it's utilizing some sort of healing technique or meditation. There, I have a lot of different things that I do when it comes to healing and spiritual work to assist people in being grounded and finding their peace and stillness. I am connected to so many practitioners that are amazing at the works that they do. So trust that on that fourth week, when you come to this space, you will leave it feeling more at peace than you were when you first came in. I can almost guarantee that unless you just got some other stuff going on. So, <laughs> And that fifth week of the month, if we do have the fifth Friday, we're going to call this a wild card Friday where we're just going to see what spirit wants to bring through that day. I will have no preconceptions. I mean, I'm sure I'll get messages throughout the day about what is going to happen because spirit just be talking to me and I'll start seeing things here and there. But we'll just leave it to whatever wants to come through. And either way, they're going to be messages for all of us, including and probably especially for myself. So that is the foundation in terms of the four or five weeks. And I so look forward to just being in the space again with you. I'm just so grateful to be here. And so for today's topic, since we are dealing with metaphysics, spirituality, religion, philosophy, and so forth, and by no means am I calling myself a scholar to the degree that we can consider certain types of scholars, but you know what? Let me even, let me backtrack. Let me not discount myself. And we, we won't probably talk about that in one of the episodes where we like to downplay ourselves. We like to discount ourselves from a place of comparison. What we're not going to do is foster that behavior. So I'm just going to go ahead and point that out within myself and say, let me not discount that. <laughs> so for this first week, talking about metaphysics, spirituality, religion, philosophy, and whatever other subjects that we can kind of put together within that category, I wanted to focus on the idea of solitude, of aloneness, loneliness. You know, as we are, I mean, depending on where you are located and depending upon the point at which your specific governmental body decided on specific quarantine beginnings, you know, some of us, we have been in quarantine. We have been in this state of isolation, social distancing in light of the pandemic for almost a year. So where I'm located, we are finishing up our ninth month, if I'm correct, going into our 10th month. And nine is an interesting number. You know, I look at things spiritually, metaphysically and so forth. And with numerology and looking at the number nine, Going into the number 10, you know, the numbers start off from one to nine and then they start back up again, one to nine and so forth. So you always add the numbers in any sequence to get the numerological breakdown or the reduction of the number to its numerological symbol or a numerological reference point. And nine is a number of completion. Nine is representing the ending of a cycle's new beginnings and so forth. And so when we pass nine, we get to one. And when we think about one and solitude and aloneness, and I remember thinking about and hearing about seeing the reflections of so many people in the beginning when announcements were being made about quarantine and social distancing, how a lot of people were really collapsing into a place of anxiety and fear and when we didn't know how long it would be and we thought it would just be for a certain amount of time, there was already this anxiety. And then when it looked like or sounded like it would be longer, 
people freaked out a bit. And now that we've come to this place where it has been longer and who knows how much longer it will be, you know, many people are having to come to terms with just being in this place of solitude, of being alone. You know, some people are social distancing with family. Some people are doing so by themselves. Some people are doing so with maybe friends or roommates and so forth. So it's really, it's really helped us to reflect on our relationship with others. The idea of relating to others, because we're in a time when the idea is to not necessarily relate in person with others in order to protect ourselves. So really looking at the value that we've placed on that and how many of us are seeing how valuable that in-person touch was with individuals outside of us. And it's really causing it, people, it's really causing all of us to just sit with the idea of sitting with ourselves. Do we enjoy our own company? Do we love ourselves? Can we find joy in our own solitude? What comes up when we're looking at or we're faced with our own solitude? You know, I was pulling some cards. I have tarot and oracle cards for myself last night. I, I often do so for myself and sometimes I'll utilize them during intuitive readings or coaching sessions that I'll have with clients. And the card that came up, it surprised me a little bit, but I'm of the opinion that at some point I'll see what it was reflecting for me or see what it was reflecting for someone outside of me whom I needed to give the message to. But the card that I pulled and the deck that I was using is the Osho Zen Tarot deck was the Aloneness card. And this card has a gentleman, looks like an elderly gentleman that is by himself, looks like a male person, at least in the image, by himself holding a staff and is looking out into the distance, walking along a valley or maybe a hilltop or a mountaintop or some something, but looking out into this light and this brightness. And so I was looking at the image, I was looking at the words and wondering if maybe there was something within me that I was avoiding when it comes to solitude, being alone, but actually I don't mind being alone. I mean, I enjoy being with other people, but I don't mind being alone. I don't mind being alone at all. It didn't seem like it really made sense for me in the moment, but I just kept it out where I could see it in the event that something was triggered throughout the days to where I would understand why this card came up. And so I was going about my day the next day and I was communicating with someone on social media and just asked them how they were doing. I hadn't spoken to this person in a long time. And I just said, hey, how are you doing? And the person said they were doing okay, but they were really having a hard time with the solitude. And as soon as they mentioned that word, I remembered the card and I went and took a picture of the card and took a picture of the description within the book for that card and sent it to this person. And it really touched that person. And they realized that maybe there was some more inner work that they needed to do with themselves and not even inner work, just really going deeper into the work that they were already doing. So just going a, a level deeper and I'll read the description of the card from the book in the event that it just really helps anyone who may be having a tough time still or has entered into a place of having a tough time in light of the fact of where we're at now. When there is no significant other in our lives, we can either be lonely or enjoy the freedom that solitude brings. When we find no support among others for our deeply felt truths, we can either feel isolated and bitter or celebrate the fact that our vision is strong enough even to survive the powerful human need for the approval of family, friends, or colleagues. If you are facing such a situation now, be aware of how you are choosing to view your aloneness and take responsibility for the choice you have made. The humble figure in this card glows with a light that emanates from within. One of Gautam Buddha's most significant contributions to the spiritual life of humankind was to insist to his disciples, be a light unto yourself. Ultimately, each of us must develop within ourselves the capacity to make our way through the darkness without any companions, maps, or guide. 
When you are alone, you are not alone. You are simply lonely. And there is a tremendous difference between loneliness and aloneness. When you are lonely, you are thinking of the other. You are missing the other. Loneliness is a negative state. You are feeling that it would have been better if the other was there. Your friend, your wife, your mother, your beloved, your husband. It would have been good if the other was there, but the other is not. Loneliness is absence of the other. Aloneness is the presence of oneself. Aloneness is very positive. It is a presence, overflowing presence. You are so full of presence that you can fill the whole universe with your presence and there is no need for anybody. <sighs> How beautiful. It's so interesting to consider the idea of being alone. Because on the one hand, and this is the interesting part because life is a paradox. <laughs> I've been really sitting with the recognition of just what a paradox life is. We like to think that everything is this or that when really it's this and that. And oftentimes, if not always, it's this is that. And the fact that we need the reflection of others, we do. We need other beings, whether they be human beings, other beings. We need their reflections to help us be more of who we are. It is through the reflections of everything around us that, again, we are able to be more of who we are. And at the same time, there is the need for us to go within and have an understanding, awareness, a recognition, a knowledge of who we are in and of ourselves without anyone or anything around us. So it's this interesting duality in terms of the work of being aware and knowledgeable about your worth, regardless of who or what is around you, while also seeing the beauty and the value of the reflections of everyone and everything around us. So then when you strip away the idea of other people's reflections, a lot of people have a hard time with that. And the first thing I want to say is that how amazing is it and how fortunate are we to have technology? Because the fact that we can't be in person with each other, we live in a time when we can still see each other every day in real time or as close to real time as possible. So yes, we don't have the physical touch aspect, but we can absolutely see each other. We can absolutely hear each other's voices. We can absolutely see a message from each other. So we still have the ability to communicate with each other. So being in gratitude for that, first and foremost, I think, is one way to pull yourself up out of any despair or angst about not having connection or community, we still have the ability to communicate with each other. It just may not look the ways we are accustomed, but we still have that access. But also, we really get to sit with ourselves during this time. Sit with ourselves, get to know ourselves in and of ourselves without the reflection of others in the ways that we have been accustomed to them. Because consider the idea that many of us don't really have a sense of who we are outside of other people, you know, with our conditioning, with the influence and not that influence from others is a negative thing. In fact, I'm always looking to see how people are influencing me and see how people are helping me to come to a better understanding of myself, a better understanding of the world around me. And again, the paradox is sometimes we have fused what is not us with us, imagining it's us. And I think this is a time for us to really sit with, okay, what is actually me? What is me? Do I really like that thing? Is that really my passion? Is that opinion really mine? Or was I tapping into opinions of other individuals, not knowing where that came from? That time to get to know ourselves is actually really beautiful. And given the ways that many of us structured our days, given the mass consensus agreements to how things should be, different work schedules, time schedules, and all these other factors that we can look at, 
We all over inundated ourselves with all this stuff to where we didn't give ourselves the time to really sit with ourselves, get to know ourselves, remember ourselves, to really remember who we are. So really looking at that opportunity for solitude as an opportunity to dive deeper into the vast ocean that is us. Speaking of ocean, I've been going to the ocean the last few days, and I will do so for another few days, if not for even longer, but as part of a ritual for myself to really sit with, to hear, to smell, to see the depth of the ocean as a permission slip, as a reflection of the depth of myself, the depth of my emotions, the depth of spirit, the depth of so many things that I maybe didn't really dive too deeply into or only scratch the surface of for whatever reason, maybe out of fear, maybe out of this idea that I didn't have enough time, whatever the case may be. But spirit's like, well, you got time now. Sit. Be still. Listen. Watch. Learn. Remember who you are. And each day as I've sat, sat and just watched, it's been so profound. And sometimes I don't even experience the profundity of it in that moment. I'll wake up to ideas and resolutions and so many different things that help me to clear a lot of things that I had been holding on to before because I was able to just sit in my solitude with the ocean. And the kicker is, when we look at this idea of being alone, loneliness, solitude, we are not alone. (laughs) We are not alone. We get so stuck in this idea that if we don't see another human being, that we're alone. It's funny. Human beings are so funny. I love us. I love us to death. We either can't stand each other (laughs) and make up all sorts of isms to reflect how much we can't stand each other, which is just really a can't standing of ourselves. You know, the ability to to project dislike or hatred or any other animosity towards a person or a group of people, to me, always stems from the inability to see, deal with, love, appreciate yourself. So that's besides the point. We'll talk about that in more detail in another episode. But it's like, on the one hand, we have issues with each other. On the other hand, if we don't see each other, we're like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> and it's, we don't know who we are without other people. And it's like, you are not alone. Even if there was no other person on this face of the earth, you're on earth with all the beings, all the plants, all the minerals, all the creatures, We are not alone. We are not alone. And forget what you see with your physical eyes, not even forget, in addition to what you see with your physical eyes, all the things that most of us don't see with our physical eyes, all the things that we deem as spirit, the ethereal in the other dimensions, they are absolutely here with us. We are bombarded with stuff. We are surrounded by beings. Again, ancestors, spirit guides, all the deities, all the elements and elementals. We are not alone. We are not alone. So to imagine that we are and to collapse into this despair from this belief that we're alone. All we have to do is just open our eyes. Open our hearts, open our minds and remember and see and feel that we're not alone. So at any given time, when you have that feeling and you experience yourself starting to go down that rabbit hole of the negative beliefs, of the despair, of the sadness, do what you can to remind yourself that you absolutely have companions through all the things that are outside of you. In addition to human beings, we are not alone. Call on your ancestors. During an event that I was doing with 
one of my good friends and colleagues, we had our priest and priestess speaking at this event that was dealing with ancestors. And my priestess, Iafayomi, said to do ancestral work is to never be alone. You are not alone. Everyone has ancestors. Everyone has a lot of ancestors. Even if you were adopted and don't know who your birth parents were, you have ancestors and they know who you are. And if you don't know any names, you can literally just say, okay, grandma, grandpa, great grandma, great grandpa, maternal side, great grandma, great grandpa, paternal side, whatever terms you want to use as placeholders for those individuals until you get names. If you ever get names, call on them. They know you. And calling on them, I kid you not, once you start that practice, it opens up so much more than you can even imagine. It opens up such a deep recognition of the support that you have. So you are absolutely not alone. So again, this paradox of use this alone time to really get to know yourself, to know what is you, what is not you. Clear it up. Cut out what isn't you. Chip away at everything that's not you so that all that is left is you. Do that work and see how you expand and open up on the other side. And remember that you are not alone. You are never not connected and surrounded by so many beings and things. It's just a matter of sitting in that recognition, of surrendering to it. Surrender to it. Surrender to it. Mm. I'm so grateful to that card for that message that it presented to me, that I was able to impart to my friend, that I'm able to share with you. And that I am hearing as I speak and it's sitting with me in whatever ways it needs to. So it's a reflection back to me. And we're not alone. We're truly not alone. And we get to sit in our solitude and deepen our love for ourselves. Deepen our understanding for who we are. Deepen, deepen, deepen. I want to thank you so much for joining me here on O's Corner for episode one. And I so look forward to being with all of you on episode two, when we talk about love, sex, dating, and all things relating to LSD with Oni. And going forward, I pray that you received whatever it is that you needed to receive from this. And I want to close out by acknowledging again all the beings that support us that exist regardless of us, but that exists with us. It's a coexistence, a co-reflection. Thank you for this life. Thank you to the ancestors, the beings in the plant, the neural animal kingdoms, the elements, elementals, the directions, just everything. Thank you to everything. Thank you to the all that is. Thank you. I'm grateful to be an aspect of the all that is. Engaging with, interacting with you and the aspects of the all that is that you reflect that you are. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I am your host, Oni, and this is O's Corner. Until next time, be well. You've been listening to O's Corner with your host, Oni. Want to know more about Oni? Log on to Oni.love. That's O-N-Y-I dot love. Thanks for listening.